If you're planning on buying, holding, or just want to learn more about quantum computing stocks here in 2025, this is going to be a great video for you. Now, we're going to take a closer look at a lot of things in today's episode. Why companies like RGTI were up over 1,000%. We'll learn about some of the top players in this space. We'll also learn some of the top technology advancements that happened in 2024. Obviously, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. We're also going to learn about some of the headwinds that investors should be familiar with. Now, if this is your first time here, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and check out the pinned comment for special offer at fool.com slash Jose. More importantly, if you want to learn about the semiconductor market, I do have a free daily newsletter. The link is down below. Now, let's get started. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. For those not familiar, my name is Jose Naharo. I do have a master's degree in electrical engineering. I focus a lot in the semiconductor space, in the AI space, and that's because both my education and the pretty cool places that I worked at before have really given me the experience to see where leading technology might be moving into. So quantum computing definitely has a lot of excitement. And before, full disclaimer, I personally do not own any quantum computing stocks. And at the moment, I do not plan on buying any, right? This overall episode is me just increasing my knowledge of this space and sharing the information that I have gathered. But we can see very, very great for investors that have purchased quantum computing in the last few months, right? We can see RGTI traded under the NASDAQ is up over 1800% in the past year. QBTS, the wave quantum is up over 1000%. IonQ is up over 298%. And we also see QUBT up over nearly 2000%. Now, if you're just getting started, or even if you have been started in quantum investing, I would recommend three videos that you should watch. The first one, I think it's a very intro video of quantum computing, and they do it in a very both educational and entertaining way. It's going to be here by Cleo Abram, and she is joined by MKBHD, a big tech YouTuber, kind of talking about quantum computers, how they look at, what kind of products, problems they're trying to solve. So that would be my first one. 17 minutes. Then the second one is Google AI with their Google Quantum recently also released a video called Quantum's Next Leap, 10 Septillion Years Beyond Classical Computer. And this is not their Willow presentation. It's some of the scientists behind there kind of doing a little bit of a, uh, a discussion for about six minutes long. And the final video that I believe in every quantum investor should really listen to is NVIDIA's developer, NVIDIA developing the workforce for quantum computing revolution. So these are three big tech plays that really kind of explain quantum computing in different ways. And they talk a lot about the headwinds and tailwinds. In about 40 minutes, you can learn so much more and become a more educational investor in the quantum world. Now, let's kind of start off with this presentation I have here. And it's like, quantum computing market landscape. So the current state of quantum computing. Right now, quantum algorithms are evolving at rapid pace, and we're seeing improvements in hardware development. I mean, we just recently heard from Google and their Willow platform. So we're still seeing investments in hardware continue to grow. And because of this, it's becoming more popular that we're starting to see tech giants, governments, and other entities invest in quantum computing. Some of the big names that work on quantum computing right now are IBM, Google and NVIDIA. The workforce is also increasing. The demand for quantum computing scientists, developers are increasing, but that is still in low level stages. Now, consumer ready applications are in early stages as well. And we've heard from a lot of information that consumer ready applications is not going to happen anytime this year or next year, but it is improving. And this Google presentation, we can see one of the Google scientists really believes that quantum computing in forms of any consumer real product is still more than half a decade or a few years away. And this person discussing here is one that they call a highly optimistic scientist in the quantum market. So again, if you're starting to think about quantum computing, the first thing you should know is that we're still a few 
years before we really start to see any type of true consumer product or true consumer use cases, which can really drive overall investments or revenue for a lot of these companies. So that's the first thing we're seeing. Now, there's also this kind of misconception that quantum computing is going to take over the traditional computing market. And no, it's just like any tool. Every tool has its own purpose. So uh, you have a plane and you have a car. Both are use useful and not one of them is taking pretty much a market from the other. That's where quantum computing and traditional computing, AI computing is right now. They both try to solve different, different problems. So we can see the opportunities for quantum computing. One is optimization problems. There's a lot of questions that we might have that can only be solved by quantum computing itself. There might be even questions we are not familiar that we need to ask right now that could be solved by quantum computing. A few things are things like anything that deals with mo molecular levels. So quantum level things like drug discovery can really re-optimize by, uh, by quantum computing. Another one is anything like chemical. So like um, battery technology is something else that can be really accelerated by quantum computing. So there are special problems and special tools that quantum computing are going to work for. And a lot of those seem to be things like nature related, creating new materials, creating new drugs. So those are opportunities for quantum computing. Now, there are a lot of limitations and limitations are important to know. First, it's just a scaling challenge. Quantum computers require significant advancements to scale up effectively. If we try to bring it down to kind of the AI market right now in the AI market, you see these huge data clusters of servers for AI chips and for AI training. That cluster of putting all these chips together is a lot of hard work and only certain companies can scale that up effectively. Now that problem is like 100x harder in quantum computing. The ability to kind of scale up these and have these quantum chips or qubits discuss with each other is something that's very, very difficult for various, various reasons. Current qubit systems are limited in size, restricting computational capabilities. We're going to see in a bit that right now, one of the biggest systems are a few hundred. We're kind of working into the thousands, but it's still very small compared to where we need to be. Um, another thing is specialized environment. This is a major, major limitation of quantum computers. Quantum computers need extremely low temperatures and isolated environment. The infrastructure required is costly and not widely available. If there is no supply chain right now to build kind of what I would call a cluster, then that can create a lot of bottlenecks in the future. And that's something that's not, that can't really be solved in a year or two. That supply chain needs to grow over time. There's also ineffective applications. Like I mentioned, quantum computing is a special tool. It's not suitable for all tasks. It's suitable for its own use cases. The other thing is high error rates at the moment due to quantum's kind of decoherence and noise. And this noise is one of the biggest issues of quantum computing. The biggest re kind of ish, uh, resolvability to these error rates are quantum computing's run things really quickly so you can keep running it running it until you get the correct answer and again a lot of this is actually discussed in quantum's next leap the google video that i recommend so definitely check that one out now that we understand i kind of just want to summarize first let's start off with the tailwinds right there's a lot of tailwinds for the overall quantum computing world first it's just industry interest we're seeing a lot of big tech players and startups growing in this market so that's good because it's going to drive more investments and it's going to drive a better workforce or an increased workforce. We also see government initiatives. We're going to see some of these companies that I mentioned earlier on are getting some form of funding via research or kind of government tasks um, to continue to grow. And then just collaborative efforts. We're also seeing partnerships between education, the academia, and private and public server um, sector to drive innovation. Now, when we talk about headwinds, we talked about it a lot. Once is the workforce challenge. Right now, there is a massive shortage in skilled professionals with expertise in quantum computing. And it's not just scientists, right? It's not just engineers. After that, you need to build a workforce of developers, of teachers, of people that are going to use those solutions. So the workforce is not the, just those 
innovating in the space, but those that are going to use this technology as well. Then there's technological barriers, like I mentioned, things like infrastructure, scale out, um, the temperature you need to have to build them. So a lot of technological barriers right now and the high cost, right? Development and maintenance of quantum systems are costly and limiting accessibility. So for you to run this into something that can be a massive revenue for the overall consumer space, and I'm not saying that every consumer is going to have some form of quantum computing when I talk about consumer market, just like data centers, right? Users don't really know about data centers. The consumer world doesn't know about these massive data centers, but these massive data centers are crucial, crucial for the consumer world. And that's where I believe quantum is going to happen, where most users and most consumers are not going to care about the quantum market, but somehow the technology that they're using on an everyday life gets impacted by quantum computing. So it's not like I'm trying to say, hey, look, quantum computing needs to enter the consumer market directly, but indirectly. Now, what I want to do is kind of discuss some of the top announcements of 2025, and hopefully you're still here in the video and you've learned a lot. Because just doing the research and thus just doing kind of the presentations for this, I learned a lot about this industry. One of the biggest announcements was Google's Willow chip, which Google unveiled, I believe, in mid-December. Now, this is, I always say that some industries are good at advertising or kind of just showing face. Google is developing at really rapid levels, but this kind of chip that they're doing and this benchmark is extremely optimized for quantum computing and not traditional computing. So it's not like you're going to eat up a market. It's more like you're looking at different problems and different tools. Another one is IBM. IBM believes that they are going to build one of the world's largest quantum computing here in 2025, featuring over 4,000 qubits. Now, that one would be huge, and it kind of just showcases if that's the largest quantum computer right now we're still in early innings because we really, we, if, if you listen to that Google video, we really need to get into the hundred thousands to really make some form of impact. We also have companies like NVIDIA and Microsoft creating some form of quantum collaborations with startups or creating software stack levels. So I've done a video on NVIDIA and everything it's doing with quantum computing. Make sure to check that out. Now for individual companies, right? These are some of the top quantum stocks that we saw. Um, and these were some of the top announcements. So RGTI, a keystone was the launch of their 84 qubit, achieving 99.5 medium 2 qubit gate fidelity. They also plan to release a 36 qubit system by mid-2025 and a 100 plus system by the end of 2025. You have Quantum Computing Inc., which extended cooperative research and development with Los Alamos National Laboratory, so we can see government um, partnerships there. They did advance the final phase of commissioning its U.S. base foundry in Arizona. They secured a fifth task order with NASA, and they continue to develop things for other national laboratories as well. So we can see how Quantum Computing Inc. is working with the government a lot. Another one is D-Wave Quantum. They completed a calibration of a 4,000 400 qubit processor, making significant advancements in quantum computing technology connectivity. They've earned a few awards status on the U.S. Department of Defense for buying platforms, which is obviously can allow the United States to maybe make some partnerships with them. And they also launched the quantum optimization market category, showcasing key use cases such as workforce scheduling and vehicle routing. Then you also have IonQ, which also made some government contracts announcements. They also made, uh, and more contracts, more in the research firm. They also made some contracts or deals with universities or other companies and even acquired Qubit Tech with, to enhance quantum networking capabilities. So again, this was more just a top level overview, understanding the tailwinds and headwinds of the market, some of the cool technology and announcements we saw in 2024. Now, this market seems pretty interesting, but I think to me, the biggest thing that stuck out to me is even some of the most bullish engineers in this market still believe we're at least half a decade away. And half a decade in the investment world is very, very long. So while the market is definitely pretty exciting about excited about this stock, 
I personally am not going to invest any time soon. And if I ever, ever, ever was to, this is going to be a very small position. Now, this doesn't mean I'm going to short the stock, right? That's not how I invest. I look at risk to reward ratio. And for me, I'm just not comfortable at these levels and I'm not comfortable with the way the overall market is. But that doesn't mean I will ever short or be bearish on this industry. This industry can continue to innovate. But as an engineer, as someone who has been in the innovative workforce, I can see that this is going to take some time. Now, let me know your thoughts on the comments if you want me to do any individual company and which one would you recommend I hit first. I'm going to try to do not a complete unbiased because at the end of the day, everyone's biased. But I'll plainly point out the growth opportunities and also the bearish opportunities. Take care. Have a good day and see you all next time.